This video is about how a 140 to 160 amp alternator of any brand can improve voltages during startup utilizing an overdrive pulley. This video setup is with a 140 amp alternator and 58 millimeter pulley. I've removed the stock positive cable from the alternator and attached one that goes directly to the battery so it's easier to differentiate the glow plug amps from the other current flows. We start with a battery voltage of 12.6. At initial key on, the glow plugs draw close to 200 amps but that will diminish to around 90 amps by the time they are fully heated. Battery voltage settles to around 11.5 while waiting for the wait to start light to go out. With this temperature and battery life, at starter engagement, voltage drops to around 10. With the overspeed pulley, the current output initially jumps up to 142 amps, settling around 127 amps. Notice the battery voltage slowly climbs. Voltage is at 14 just before glow plug disengagement. And with the glow plugs disengaged, the alternator output is around 35 amps. And the engine controls require 18 amps. So each battery is taking on 7.5 to 8 amps each for a charge at this point in time. I do three sets of testing for each example presented. One was better for video, and this is the average of all three. Shown by the black data line, this 140 amp alternator and small pulley combination is capable of generating about 125 amps at engine idle speed within a few seconds of the start. The red data line illustrates the glow plug draw. The light blue line reflects the current flow of the batteries, initially from them and then to them while recharging. The dark blue line is the system voltage. The electrical characteristics are typical for this vehicle during a cold start in the winter. Once the ignition switch is turned on, the glow plugs are energized with an initial current draw of approximately 200 amps. The batteries are also supplying the power for the engine controls, an additional 18 to 20 amps. Both of these demands drop the battery voltage down approximately 1 volt to 11.5. As the glow plug elements rise in temperature, the resistance in the wire goes up and the current is reduced. This will continue until the current stabilizes around 90 amps well after engine start. Starter engagement causes another big drop in voltage. A longer starter engagement will drop the voltage even deeper. These voltage drops will vary depending on the battery's state of charge, capacity, and their temperature. Overnight temperature is a factor due to a few variables, as well as the change in the battery's internal resistance. The graph initially shows the glow plugs drawing power out of the batteries. But the current flow is reversed within seconds of the engine starting due to the output of this alternator's application. And the batteries are starting to accept a charge. Once the batteries are no longer supplying current to start the vehicle and power the glow plugs, the batteries charge and the voltage continues to rise. The slow voltage rise reflects the volume of charging current flowing into the batteries that are not used by the glow plugs. And the upward slope of the system voltage 
is telling us that our batteries are charging. After the 40 second point, the current to the glow plug stabilizes at 90 amps, and the batteries accept 18 amps, 9 amps each. Once the glow plugs time out at around 90 seconds, the battery still will only accept 16 amps. The alternator is supplying 34 amps, the remaining amps going to the vehicle's electronic controls. With this alternator and pulley, once the glow plugs are off, there's a good amount of headroom for other electrical devices, both at idle and more so once the engine RPM is increased. And before one gets too excited about needing to improve this, we are talking about the initial one to two minutes from starting the vehicle cold. We should be letting a diesel motor warm up for more time than this before engaging in driving and turning the other electronics on. So what are the demands we can expect to have with a relatively stock pickup truck? So through the central junction box, key on. About 18 amps after warm up, 20 if cold. Radio, heated seats. Heater high. Headlights, brake lights, windshield high, so for my truck on a late winter snowy night, if I turn on everything, demand will be around 65 to 70 amps and maybe another 21 to 22 amps if the Super Duty had a rear heater or AC system. Let's go back to the data graph. This trial was 12 hours downtime and 26 degrees overnight. I mentioned I do three trials. Here's another. 24 hours downtime and 3 degrees colder. A little longer glow plug time. Still touching 10 volts at starter engagement with this battery set. Glow plug current went a little deeper, but overall it has the same characteristics. So I'm going to speculate about what I didn't do. All electrical accessories in the cabin turned on would be the same draw as the glow plugs. The graph data is with a cold idle higher RPM, but the running voltage, while it's still lower, should be much better than we would get with a 110 amp alternator or even a 140 amp alternator with a stock pulley. So what would a 140 amp alternator with a stock pulley look like? Even with a warmer morning the alternator output is only around 90 amps and with less current flow headroom voltage is struggling with the same alternator. The light blue line still shows that power is coming out of the batteries. The dark blue line, which is flat, shows the batteries are not getting charged. The pulley is the only change. Still better than a 110 amp alternator with a stock pulley on my truck. And now if you look at the light blue battery amps after glow plug disengagement, it's only now that the batteries are taking a charge. 50 amps for both, minus the 18 for the electronics. So there is less current available for lights and other accessories. So for me, a 140 or 160 amp alternator with an overdrive pulley would be a good choice. But adding additional electrical loads and driving off should be delayed until the glow plugs turn off. That's not a hardship, it's just discipline. A 58 millimeter pulley for our trucks costs under $15 shipped from eBay. 
using Ford's own data for its 140 amp alternator. Spinning the alternator slightly faster is not going to get us a higher capability. It's going to overclock the alternator as though it was operating at a higher engine RPM. And it will never take the alternator to an armature speed that would be detrimental. It's on a diesel. We always will have the adjustment in voltage output based on the regulator circuitry to protect the battery from overcharge at elevated underhood temperatures. The same as we do for stock pulley. But for many applications, the 140 to 160 amp alternator is a good size to have compared to the stock 110 amp alternator.